everybody, my name is Luke Moore, this is Hot Mode, and today on Hot Mode we are going to be talking about the Met Gala and its exhibit and the fact that it was called out for cultural appropriation. Before we get into the actual video though, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. So you can go down below, hit the subscribe button, turn on my post notifications. Also, if you guys like these kinds of videos where I dissect and analyze cultural and fashion together, definitely give this video a like, it lets me know. And if you guys want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Mode. So let's get into the specifics of this whole cultural appropriation thing at the Met. So the exhibit, as I said in my Met Gala roast, was Heavenly Bodies, Fashion and the Catholic Imagination. And essentially the exhibit was looking at how fashion designers have interpreted the Catholic Church and all of the art and readings and beautiful things that have gone on throughout the Catholic Church's history. So this could be clothing, Bibles, paintings, anything, like anything at all. So the night of the Met Gala or the day after, some conservative people, whether they were Catholic or Christian, decided that they were gonna go on Twitter and say that my religion is not a fucking dress or that if any other religion had been used as the subject of a exhibit that people would be triggered and going crazy. So here's the thing. The Catholic Church is a very powerful institution and it always has been a very powerful institution. I went to Catholic school my entire life and I will tell you, the only time I paid attention was religious history in eighth grade. Thank you, Mr. Lucio. And what happened was the Catholic Church essentially went into all of these different countries that were new or not civilized in their mind and said, oh, we're gonna convert you to Catholicism because like that's what Jesus told us to do. So they went in, they were really awful to a lot of the indigenous peoples of where they went. It was just a bad thing overall. Like the missionaries got murdered and killed. A lot of the indigenous people got murdered and killed. Like there was no, you know, perfect ending anywhere to be found throughout like, oh, I don't know, hundreds of years. And also like the crusades and the priestly children touching things like haven't helped the Catholic church at all. So the Catholic church is not perfect in any sense. And also the idea that the Catholic church is being cultural appropriated doesn't make any sense because I will give you the definition of cultural appropriation. According to Wikipedia, cultural appropriation is a concept dealing with the adoption of the elements of a minority culture by the members of a dominant culture. It is distinguished from cultural exchange due to the presence of a colonial element and imbalance of power. So essentially it's a really powerful group in a society taking and using and abusing things from a minority group because they can. The reason that all of these conservatives were calling out the looks from the red carpet was because a girl in America had actually wore a cheap how for her prom. The problem was she was white. And if you should know anything about cultural appropriation, white people can't just kind of go and take and use without permission at all. Minority people's stuff, like they just can't. You can't, it's just not appropriate, you can't. If you read a history book and look at America's imperialistic attitude, as a white American, just don't do it. Like there's no reason, you don't have a reason to do it. So conservatives were all up in arms that this girl was attacked for wearing this cheap how. And so they were like, well, we don't like when people appropriate these cultures. But here's the thing, the Catholic Church is in no way being culturally appropriated. It doesn't make any sense. There is no imbalance of power that is being taken from the Catholic Church because it is a still very powerful and prominent part of society. A lot of people were also really upset with what Rihanna wore, which was a Margiela look made by John Galliano. And they weren't really upset about the John Galliano thing. They were really upset that she looked like the Pope. Well, here's the thing, John Galliano did a Dior inspired look in 2000 that looked like the Pope and was a representation of the Pope with gigantic pads in his hips. It was amazing. But here's the thing, the Pope is a very powerful person. He's in charge of, oh, I don't know, the papal state. He is very rich and he lives in like the papal apartments, which are like literally just covered in gold. It's like a better Trump tower. So in no way is anybody cultural appropriating or taking from the Pope. Catholics are definitely allowed to be like, I don't like the way that you interpreted the Pope and I think that's disrespectful. And Catholics are allowed to believe that 110%. I come from a very Catholic family. 
I have a dad who was such a devout Catholic, like so devout. I had an aunt who was a nun for like 20 or 30 years. Like my entire family is very devout. So I was like, all right, let me check Facebook, see if anybody's like go and cray. Check Facebook, which is where all of the fights break out always. And there was nothing. Essentially, people were just sharing the Met Gala looks on Facebook and being like, these are so cool. So yeah, I feel like a lot of people were just kind of butthurt about the fact that Catholicism was being interpreted by fashion people. And I think that a lot of people are still very wary of expensive and luxury fashion. So I think there's like an underlying issue that they have with expensive clothes. Another point about the Margiela look was that it was designed by John Galliano, who in no way is a pillar of society or virtue or anything, but he grew up in a strict Catholic family. So as somebody that grew up Catholic and I grew up Catholic, I feel that if you grew up Catholic and you were forced into being a Catholic, which let me just say at three months old, I did not raise my hand and say, oh, yep, 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 throw me in the water. Like I'm good. Like I want Jesus to go right here. Like that, that didn't happen. So essentially you're forced into Catholicism when you're in a Catholic family. John made this dress because he grew up Catholic and that's how he interpreted it. And that is appropriate. And he is allowed to do that because he grew up Catholic. Like he is, that is, that is it. He may not be a Catholic anymore, but he is allowed to do it. And also a lot of designers grew up Catholic or still are Catholic or come from a Catholic brand. So yeah, like, let's not be crazy. Let me just get my list out of some of the Catholic designers. So first up, you have Pier Paolo Piccioli of Valentino. He grew up Italian. And if you didn't know, Italy is like essentially just the Catholic haven. Also Donatella Versace of Versace grew up Catholic, I 100% can tell you that. And also Gianni, her brother, definitely grew up Catholic. Fernando Garcia of Oscar de la Renta. I don't know if Fernando grew up Catholic, but he is of Dominican and Spanish descent. And let me just say that those are two very Catholic countries. And also Oscar de la Renta grew up in a very Catholic household. So again, under the banner of that house, he is allowed to design it how he wants to. Ricardo Tiski, who didn't really design anything for Burberry, but was there, also grew up Catholic in Italy. So bam. Tommy Hilfiger grew up in a strict Irish Catholic family and so did Maria Grazia Curie of Dior. So, so essentially there were so many designers that grew up Catholic or still are Catholic or have any sort of Catholic code in their body. They're allowed to design because they grew up Catholic and they understand the experiences. They've grown up with the ideas and images of Catholicism and yeah, they're allowed to do it. I'm not Catholic anymore at all, but like if you can't see the beauty in the fact that the Catholic imagination, like, and not the imagination of like being that Jesus and God are all made up, but the imagination that you don't really get all that many pictures and all those kinds of stuff in the Bible. Like I'm pretty positive there are no pictures in the Bible. I don't know. Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and Donatello and all of these Catholic artists all kind of just pulled it out of their brain. So it's really a beautiful interpretation of faith and Catholicism and all of these different things. So. I don't really know why any Christian or Catholic is offended by it. It's a beautiful interpretation of their religion and it's a beautiful imaginative way of showing faith. And as I said, I grew up Catholic. I very specifically remember the big crucifix and I remember the light blue, beautiful painted background against Jesus in my church in Staten Island. So yeah, like, you can take so much inspiration from Catholicism and you don't really think about it, but like it is a very imaginative, colorful, wonderful, ritualistic religion that stripped it down to its core is essentially just a brilliant excuse to be imaginative. The other big point that like people were pointing out is the fact that the Vatican was working with the Met for this whole exhibit. Like Cardinal Dolan, who is the Cardinal of New York, was at the Met Gala. There were a bunch of different priests and lay people at the gala as well. Literally, it was like sponsored by the Vatican. When I went to the exhibit, there was the whole Vatican collection, which were a bunch of pieces given to the Met by the Vatican so that they could be shown off. Let me just say that if you're in New York or you get the chance to come to New York before, I think September 9th, 2018, don't hold me accountable for the date. You should definitely go. It literally was so beautiful. Like the Vatican collection, I was like, all right, let's just go see it. It was amazing. Like it was actually so fucking insane that like people made the shit that they made. Like 
it's ridiculously beautiful and wonderful and you should go see it. It's literally art. So yeah, it was a beautiful exhibit. I also think that like all the Catholics up in New York that can should go to the exhibit. It's wonderful. It's a way to reflect. I'm not even Catholic and I felt like that it was a very spiritual experience for me. So I can't imagine what like an actual devout Catholic would go through going through all of these different pieces and seeing how people interpret their religion in a beautiful way. There was not a disrespectful piece in that exhibit and honestly I was shocked by that. I thought maybe they would have had like a kind of look at the hard part of being Catholic but there wasn't like it was only the beauty and wonder of the Catholic imagination. So if anybody's upset or disgruntled, let me just say that if, if I had a spiritual experience, you would have had an amazing spiritual experience there. Also in the exhibit, you see that a lot of Catholic priests actually have patron fashion designers to create costumes or looks for different sculptures in different churches and all of these different things. I didn't really understand why these priests were like, patroning fashion designers, but still. So Catholic priests were saying, oh yeah, I want these fashion designers to make these looks for our sculptures and all these different things. So again, the higher ups in the Catholic church were like, yeah, this is cool. We like this, this is amazing. Also the red carpet was like so respectful. It was scary. Like the only thing that I really saw were like some high slits. Like I didn't see any boobage. I didn't see anything crazy. Beyonce did not come in a see-through dress. Like. It wasn't disrespectful at all. And by being not disrespectful, it was extremely respectful to Catholicism and the ideas of, you know, not showing off so much of your body and all these different things. And nobody had to do that. Like people could have went picking nuts, but they didn't. Like they were really wonderful and respectful. And I was actually shocked at how amazing and lovely they were. And also on the red carpet, nobody even like interpreted the devil or satanic worship or anything like that besides Nicki Minaj. And like, honestly, you couldn't tell from that because she had little crosses on her headpiece. So again, like there was no disrespect from anyone at all on that red carpet. And honestly, after having seen a part of the exhibit, I have to say that it made some really poignant and smart connections between Catholicism and fashion. Like, essentially, if you think about it, a Catholic mass is really a show, and it's like a show for Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit and all these different people who Catholics believe in. And fashion is essentially a show. It's essentially a showing of who you are. And through Catholicism, priests and altar boys and those that attend church all are showing themselves through what they wear and how they act and what they do. So yeah, it was a really amazing, amazing, amazing experience to have gone and seen it. So I think that all Catholics and all people of religious affiliation should go see it. And so I would hope in the future that the Met explores Judaism and Islam and Buddhism and all of these different religions because it's really beautiful to see how the interpretations of these religions go forth in fashion design and accessory design and all these different things. I really thought it was a really beautiful experience and if anybody's upset about it, you probably haven't seen it and you haven't experienced what it's like to really see all the beauty and wonder of that exhibit. So yeah, I recommend that if you are either Catholic or not, you definitely go see the exhibit. If you're in New York, you're gonna be in New York any time in the future. And also like really look at the history of the Catholic Church and it as a whole in order to really understand what the Catholic Church really is and why you maybe shouldn't be defending it as hard as you're defending it. So please let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments below. I love to read your comments. I'd love to have a discussion on all of this because it's very poignant in our society today. I will see you guys on the next video and TTYF.